In this video, we're going to learn how to rationalize the denominator. So for each, each example, we're going to rationalize each denominator and then simplify our answer. So in the last lesson, we talked about binomial expressions involving square roots. And by multiplying by its conjugate, conjugate can actually get rid of the square root, thus rationalizing that denominator, because there will no longer be a radical in the denominator. So to get rid of this square root of 5 and the square root of 2 in the denominator, I will multiply the numerator and denominator by its conjugates, which would be square root of 5 plus the square root of 2, just changing the sign in between. By doing this, my denominator, when multiplied, is now difference of squares. So I will have the square root of 5 squared minus the square root of 2 squared. But my numerator, I'll just distribute this 3 square root of 2 into that binomial. So 3 square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is 3 times 1, which is 3. And 2 times 5, which will give me the square root of 10, plus 3 times 1, which is 3. And then the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is the square root of 4, which we know is 2. So I will now have 3 times 3 square roots of 10 plus 3 times 2, which is 6, all over 5, because the square root cancels with the square, minus 2. Now, typically, when you have uh, radicals, you want to put them later than the uh, whole numbers. So this can be rewritten as 6 plus 3 square roots of 10 over 3. And now I notice that 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 3 square roots of 10 divided by 3 is the square root of 10. So I have 2 plus the square root of 10 when I simplify. And now you'll see here there is no more denominator, and it is just a radical expression without a denominator, which does rationalize the denominator to 1. So next, I have 4x over 3 minus the square root of 6. Now, even if the numerator has a variable in it, the process is still the same. We will multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugates of the denominator. So we can get rid of that square root of 6 down there, which is 3 plus the square root of 6. So my denominator becomes 3 squared minus the square root of 6 squared. And my numerator is 4x times 3, which is 12x, plus 4x times the square root of 6, which is just that. My denominator is now 9 minus 6. My numerator is 12x plus 4x squared root of 6. Leave me with my denominator as just 3. So 12x plus 4x squared root of 6 all over 3. You may ask yourself the question, sh should I divide that 12 by 3? Only if you want to separate these two terms up top. I know that 4 is not divisible by 3, so I'm not going to write this as two separate fractions. I'll just keep it as one large one. But up here, I knew that 6 and 3 were divisible by that 3, which is why I divided both of them for my final answer. Now, be very careful. I know that 6 is divisible by 3, but it's underneath a radical, so we wouldn't actually be able to combine those two numbers. Next up, we have 4 plus the square root of 27. So again, square root of 27 can be, fat, can be simplified, so we're going to do that before we start. So I can rewrite the square root of 27 as the square root of 9 times 3 over 2 minus the square root of 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3, so now I have 4 plus 3 square roots of 3 over 2 minus uh, what looks like now, I forgot to write the 3 next to it, as I'm seeing here, so I'm going to make that edit. But that 3 can come out and multiply to the 3 that was already there. So now I have 3 times the square root of 9 times 3. So 3 times 3, which gives me 9 square roots of 3.
So when I go to simplify, I'll multiply my numerator and my denominator by the conjugate of my denominator. So that's 2 plus 9 square roots of 3. I have, a, I have conjugates in my denominator, so that just becomes uh, 2 squared minus 9 square roots of 3 squared. And my numerator isn't just a simple distribution. It's going to be the FOIL method. So it's going to have four terms up there I'll need to combine later. 4 times 2, which is 8. 4 times 9 square roots of 3, which is 36 square roots of 3. Square, 3 square roots of 3 times 2, which is 6 square roots of 3. And then 3 square roots of 3 times 9 square roots of 3 is 27 square roots of 9 which will come out to be 81 when I multiply 27 by 3. My denominator, my numerator is 8 plus 36 square roots of 3 plus 6 square roots of 3, which is 42 square roots of 3, plus 27 times 3, which is 81, all over 4 minus 9 squared, which is 81, times 3, which is 243. So when I go to simplify, my numerator will be 8 times eight, 8 plus 81, which is 89, plus 42 square root of 3. And my denominator is 4 minus 243, which gives me negative 239. So you either write your answer this way, or you might move it out in front and put the negative in front of the fraction to keep it the same. Or move the negative to my numerator and have negative 89 minus 42 square roots of 3 over a positive 239. Next up I have the square root of 44x squared over the square root of 11 plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify before I start. I notice that 44 it does have a perfect square in it of 4 times 11 times x squared and x squared is also a perfect square. So when I go to simplify, I'll get 2 on the outside and I'll get x square roots of 11. But one thing to be very careful about moving forward is that this x that came out has the potential to be a negative number. But I know that on the inside of this radical, I'll, I would always get a positive number since I'm squaring the x. So even though I'm taking this x out of the radical, I'm going to put in absolute value bars to make sure there's no chance that I'll get a negative on the outside. Now simplifying, I'll multiply my numerator and my denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, which isn't square root of 11 plus 3. It's actually square root of 11 minus 3, because you take the opposite sign. So, so far we've seen lots of minuses. This one has a plus. So the conjugate is going to be square root of 11 minus 3. which when I multiply 2 absolute value of x times the square root of 11 into the binomial, I'll get 2 absolute value of x times the square root of 121, that's 11 times 11, minus 6 absolute value of x square root of 11, all over the square root of 11 squared minus 3 squared. So up top, they can't combine. I must have 2 absolute value of x times the square root of 121, which is 11, minus 6 absolute value of x square roots of 11, all over 11 minus 9, which this can be simplified even further. Because up top, I have 22 absolute value of x minus 6 absolute value of x square roots of 11 all over 2. So 22 divided by 2 is 11 absolute value of x minus 3 absolute value of x square roots of 11. Now, 
Uh, I have only been doing square roots so far because this conjugate method only worked with square roots. Now, when you have a cube root or even a fourth root, the way you rationalize those will be a different method because you, you can't just multiply by the same thing. You can't expect a square in it to get rid of a cube root. So the difference of squares wouldn't work here. Because to rationalize a cube root, you need to make, need to make a perfect cube within the cubed root. So right now, 2 is not a perfect cube, but if I multiply it by the cube root of 2 squared, I'm in my numerator and my denominator, I'll get 2 to the first times 2 squared, which is the cube root of 2 cubed, which is a perfect cube, thus helping me get rid of that radical in my denominator. And then in my numerator, I'll distribute, so 4 times the cube root of 2 squared, which would be 4 cube roots of 4, plus the cube roots of 2 to the first times 2 to the second, which is 2 to the third. And now I can simplify everything. And that gives me 4 cube roots of 4, plus just 2, because the cube root and the cube will cancel, over 2. So simplifying a little bit further and put my radical second, I get 2 divided by 2, which is 1, plus 4 divided by 2, which is 2 cube roots of 4. And I've now rationalized its denominator as well. And even with the fourth root, I'm not going to use the same exact method as I would for a cube root, because I want something to the fourth power within that radical to get rid of it. So I'm going to multiply by the fourth root of x to the third. So I get x to the first times x to the third, which is x to the fourth, which helped me get rid of that fourth root in my denominator. And whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to my numerator. So I'm going to do that real quick. And now I'll have uh, in my denominator the fourth root of x to the fourth, which is perfect. And in my numerator, I'll have 5 times the fourth root of x to the third plus the fourth root of x to the fourth when I multiply x by x cubed. And then I'll write out, I have now an x plus 5 fourth roots of x cubed all over x. Now, what, what, whether or not we have to put an absolute value depends on this earlier step of how the expression was given to us. Now, a fourth root cannot have a negative underneath, or else it would not be a real number. So if I am assuming that x needs to be positive, I'm going to write next to my answer that x has to be greater than 0. So if, I, if I'm assuming that based on the original expression, I don't need to put absolute value bars since x is already assumed to be positive. In fact, I'll include that in my answer as well. And that is how you rationalize the denominator.